接去蒙在中国外交上神秘的面纱。This is the Concorde Convention Center in Paris. But today's show is neither a concert nor a drama. It's bidding for the 2012 and 2015 World Expos. The man sitting at the president's table of the International Expo Bureau is Chinese senior diplomat Wu Jianming. Since the first World Expo in London, 1851, Wu Jianmin is the first president of the International Expo Bureau from an Asian country. He's served two full terms. China, an economy on fire. A quarter century after opening the door, China is now the world's workshop. Live from the Fortune Global Forum in Beijing, China. Wu Jianmin is president of uh, Beijing's Foreign Affairs University. And I, I want to begin and ask you about this. Is there a risk that China went a little too far in allowing the demonstrations against Japan? Let me put it this way. Should today German chancellor go somewhere to honor the memory of Adolf Hitler, next day he will be forced to step down as chancellor. Today in Japan, Political figures, including Prime Minister, they keep paying visits to Yakasuni Shrine there to honor, I mean, the memory, including 14 Class A war criminals. These war criminals were responsible for killing, for massacring millions and millions of Asians. These Chinese are angry. I think it's a legitimate anger. However, I told the students, you have to do it in a legal way. When you throw the stone at the Japanese embassy, it's the wrong way to do it. The second issue, Taiwan. Taiwan is part of China, international community. You know, US-Japan defense treaty. A few days ago, Japanese foreign minister says it covers Taiwan. How come? In January of 1991, Wu Jianmin served as the chief spokesman of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he became the focus of domestic and international media attention. January 1993. United States President Bill Clinton held his inaugural address where he announced that the U.S. would link China's most favored nation status to its human rights progress and consider human rights in deciding whether to extend it. Though Clinton's new policy got a mixed reception at home, there were those who warned the Clinton administration that withdrawing China's most favored nation status would have a massive impact on the American economy. In March 1994, Warren Christopher paid his first visit to China as Secretary of State. The world watched. 前副总理讲了这个克里斯托克里斯托夫来我要上电梯
说中国政府有什么好怕的？我还没见到哪个国家政府经济以两位数增长的时候他会倒台，世界上还没有这么回事一讲这个话，下面就赶着镇住了。当时那个 CNN 驻北京的首席记者，这 Michael c h i n o y 一下抓住我说：“吴先生，我等你这个话等了两年了。” Two months after Christopher's visit to China, Clinton announced that he would not interrupt China's most favored nation status and would put trade ahead of human rights issues. From 1991 to 1994, Wu presided over 168 news conferences. Wu has a quick mind, and he electrifies listeners with his words. He faces danger calmly. His witty approach to questions depicts China's development and its new stance on and new position in international affairs. I think the foreign policy is to talk about the truth. The truth is best told by the people. Make people happy. This is the purpose. In January 1996, facing a difficult mission. Wu undertook his appointment as China's permanent ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva. It was only three months before the opening of the UN Commission on Human Rights. 一门心思，如何把这个反华提案给击败，这就要动脑子了。我到了第二天，我就递交了我的委任状，周一我就可以开始工作了，就拜会日内瓦人权会的各国代表。那是五十多国家一个个拜会，几周下来，就发现发展中国家对于这个人权委员会啊有很大的意见。有些大使直截了当就我讲，吴大使你刚刚到底不知道，人权会哪是人权会成法庭了、啊，审判我们的全是发达国家，我们这些人受审判，如果一盘散沙，没有力量，能不能组织起来啊？萌生了这个想法，然后几个大使就开始串联。有一位大使，亚洲大国的大使，就说：“我来挑头。”我说：“好，你来挑头，我支持。”到了二月底，三月初就开人权会了。二月底，我见他仅仅不挑头，我就专门找他单独谈了一次。他就回了我一句：“吴大使，是我请示国内了。”请示国内，国内就回复。算了，别挑头吧，保自己。我一听心里就凉了，当怎么办？他把话锋一转，说：“吴大使，你来挑头。”当时一想，我是这样行不行？咱眉头，轮流坐庄。第一次到我那儿去开会去，就是出了这个点子。对方一听说第一次到你那儿开，好，第二次可以到我这儿来开。我就在人权会前一周，再找了个周末，在我那开会。这些大使们去了，我们当时取了个名字，叫做“观点相似的”，啊，大使的会议，就是 “like-minded group”。一上来我讲了一下，我说，本人初来乍到，这个人权问题我不是很了解，但是我查了一下，人权会啊，最近几年所通过的国别决议，就是专门批评人权状况不好的国家。全是发展中国家，没有一个发达国家。我这个就不正常了。我说我们这些大使走南闯北都知道，发达国家也有人权问题啊。我说我如果我们不组织起来，那我们就是一个每个国家都是靶子，因为叫做 sitting duck， 坐在那儿压着，这猎人拿着枪一个个来射击。这些大使们感同身受啊，大家都讲自己遭受屈辱的经历啊，越讲越气。这个大家已经一个个,个的讲发言，像开诉普会一样的。这个古巴大使抓着我拍了一下大腿，我们终于组织起来了。The session on human rights was fast approaching, and the battle of words and rhetoric was looming large on the horizon. Wu nervously prepared as best he could. 那时候我在卢森堡当大使，他在日内瓦呢，人权会斗争很激烈，呃，这个发言呢，都是他亲自写的。英文稿事先我专门发到卢森堡，请施耀华帮我顺一顺，我是要要稍微稍微厉害一点，就把这个口气翻出来
人权委员会座无虚席。平常人权委员会最多一般人，讨论反华提案的时候，这是人权会的大席。你要去晚了，找不到位置，有的人站在那儿听会。这个时候，我觉得中国人要讲出自己的道理来。你们现在第六次搞反华提案，我们说中国人从两个事实当中得到启示：第一，你搞反华提案，那些搞得最厉害的国家，恰恰是在历史上侵犯中国人权最厉害的国家，八国联军、七国都在里边。啊，第二，你骂我最凶的时候。恰恰是我进步最快的时候。你关心的是什么？你不是关心中国的人权，你是关心你的霸权。你搞六个反华提案，就希望中国人听你的，不走自己的路，太不自量力了。中国人走自己路走了五千年了。我当时骂了一句：“不要说你搞六个决议，你搞六十个决议，中国人照样走自己的路。” Lastly, the Commission decided not to consider the resolution on the human rights situation in China, as put forth by the United States, and adopted China's no action motion by a vote of 27 to 20. The struggle, however, was no less heated in the 1997 session. 九七年那个现场表决的时候很紧张，表决之前就在会场，我就得到国内的给我电话。就有一个非洲国家大使，原来是投票支持我们的，现在要变成弃权了，就要少一票。我说怎么办？找他谈一谈吧。我是代表团团长，我的行动美方是非常注意的。我就找了下面同志，我说你跟那个大使约一下，我在会场外面见他。后来他出去了，我就跟出去了。我就问他，我说是不是很困难啊？他说是。因为他呢跟我关系很好，他原来呢不仅答应投我的票，而且会上发言支持中国。我说如果太困难了，你在会上的发言呢，不发也可以，你就投我的票就行了。他就是吴大师，你放心，一切照旧。最后不仅是投了我们的票，而且发言支持中国，真不容易啊。On April 15, 1997, China foiled the U.S.-led anti-China human rights motion at the 53rd session of the U.N. Commission on Human Rights by a vote of 27 to 17, with nine abstentions. Finally, we 大使，别谢，支持中国就是支持自己。From the 46th session of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights in 1990 to the 60th session in 2004, 15 years, the United States put forward a resolution to address the human rights situation in China 11 times. With respect to this issue, the U.S. found itself increasingly isolated. In 2005, the United States announced that they would not advance a motion to address the human rights situation in China. And on the 15th of March, 2006, the U.N. General Assembly created the Human Rights Council to promote and protect all human rights to address human rights violations and to examine all member states' human rights situation, including those of the United States.